so I'm back at the uh, east side Dodge. Came here at nine o'clock. They're ready to uh, cancel the deal because I was lying in bed overnight thinking about this. Um, the trade in, you know, when they use the, they give you the trade in, and we agreed on ninety nine point seven uh, thousand Canadian, but the buyout was uh, 117,000 Canadian still because it's been only like what six months since I had the car right and uh, the Hellcat but when they put it in the contract for some reason instead of 97 997 trading they promised me it shows 95 and when I asked them about this they said it's the tax there's tax inside so they had to remove the tax and I was thinking about this totally confused you know lying in bed thinking why are they using the uh, buyout 117 which already has tax in but they're giving me 99 instead of 99.7 that we agreed on they gave me 95 so it's like five thousand dollars is missing you know so i came back here i said can i please have my black key back because i still had the red key but you know for the negotiation right i said can i please have my black key back and they said why i said well we might need to re renegotiate but I just need, I need the black key for now, okay, because I still have my ownership and everything, right? They have the, they have the Hellcat, but it's still in my name, uh, because I still wasn't approved uh, by the bank. And so they gave me the key and we started arguing about the tax and finally I realized that, yeah, this is, uh, there was not a mistake because at the bottom there was GST, like there's nothing. They didn't charge me GST, basically that's what you get, you get a tax credit of this five thousand uh, dollars but anyway it's like very confusing very confusing so the the bank asked for a couple for a couple of couple thousand bucks more i gave them a thousand down and now they asked for uh, four thousand more and so i used the well i still had the black key i said can we reduce that to like three thousand total and they said okay so they took off some money over the price of the new jeep and I went to the bank, grabbed uh, 2,000 cash, and I'm just sitting here waiting for the finance manager, so they're gonna give me the final sales contract, you know, with the serial number and everything. Even though I already have the car, I have the key, which will now Steven, the sales guy, is transferring the plate from my Hellcat to this. But once I have the contract, then uh, with the bill of sale, you have seven days to, to officially transfer the plate. So if a cop stops me, I can just show them bill of sale, but insurance, I have to call insu my uh, insurance company and transfer insurance to the new vehicle and they will need a copy, right, before I leave, because now I've, b I've been driving this uh, Jeep with their plate and with their fleet insurance, right, so now once they're changing the, um, the plates, I, I need to transfer my insurance and that's it, and then I can leave and it's my car. So no more Hellcat. Yeah. Oh, and by the way, what's cool is that it's the same bank. They got me financed with the same bank where my Hellcat was financed. Interesting. And like here, there's a, a lot of cool vehicles over here. Like this Jeep is just amazing. You know, this is a Sahara. Sahara Jeep. And over here, they used to have, uh, there was a red Hellcat, just like mine, only red sold see now they have a charger and this charger is not even uh rt it's uh, you see like nothing here so it's a gt so it says this four wheel drive but gt if there's nothing i'm pretty sure it's it's just a v6 just a v6 but another cool thing here while i'm waiting and there's a huge wagoneer there over there grand cherokee uh but a cool thing is this, I saw, I thought I wanted to show you guys the story of the Jeep, you know, it's like, it's really interesting, I like the past model. So it started in 1940 with the Willis. The first Jeep was Willis Quad, right? Then 1946, they had the Willis wagon, right? America first all steel station wagon. And then there was Jeep's Jeepster in 48. 51 and then they got this Jeep M170 that was made between 53 and 64 right when I was born 
So that was probably a popular vehicle. And then they got this Willis MB that was used in the Second World War, 41 to 45. And then we have Willis Overland truck, truck for farmers. That looks more like a modern uh, pickup truck, right? So 47 to 65. Then this was another military one, uh, 52 to 71 Jeep M38A1. And now here with this Jeep CJ5, we already see something very similar to modern Jeeps, Jeep Wranglers, civilian Jeep brand. Ah, okay, so they use this one and they created a civilian one. Okay, now 63, we have Jeep Wagoneer, first luxury 4x4 SUV doesn't look like much and now they have wagoneer as well with the new one which they don't because here they ended 2018 and now they have they came back to the same name and this one was used in vietnam m715 67 to 69 j10 pickup honcho 74 to 87 uh, finally we have cherokee first time in 75 full-size jeep uh, with two doors by the way 75 to 83 and then we have the gladiator which they're making now 63 to 87 jeep gladiator jeepster commando 67 to 73 uh, cj5 renegade and they had cj5 over there 72 to 83 and then cj7 76 to 86 and this is a scrambler CJ, cj8 comanche 86 wagoneer limited 84 to 90 and finally a wrangler right so 97 that's when it came out that looks exactly like it it's still looking today 97 to 06 then we have this yeah then we have cj5 laredo 80 to 86 elevated style with chrome accent grand wagoneer uh, jeep wrangler again 87 to 96 modernized wrangler with the roof and now this one of course Cherokee, 93 to 95. And uh, these are already modern ones, Jeep Liberty, Jeep Compass, first time in 2007. Uh, Jeep Cherokee again, Liberty. Uh, Jeep Compass, 2017 to, that looks like my car. And Gladiator. You see, so they went back to the Gladiator. So originally it was, it looks like this, looked like this. So now it looks like this. And then we have Commander, again, Cherokee with off-road capability, Renegade, and that's the modern version of the Wrangler. And there's a couple of more, more uh, models that are not shown here like this. Wagoneer, right? So that's the one over there. The black one, very expensive. So Steven, my sales guy, uh, showed me some really cool things here. Like, you know, this is a really advanced dash. There's so many options here, like by using this button. Look, it can be this, right? After right. 80 meters, go around the roundabout and take the third exit, Redstone Boulevard Northeast. Yeah, basically it's, uh, hold on. And I added my uh, added my home address over here. So now, you know, when I click home, it will take me here. So very nice big screen, right? Very bright. And I really like all this stuff here. So still manual. I can do manual if I go into if I push it to the left. Bunch of controls here. Bunch of controls over here. But yeah, this one is really nice. You know, it's it's neat, right? Uh, click OK for digital. Oh, this is just miles per hour versus uh, versus uh, 
So like now it's uh, miles per hour. I can click, I just push the OK button, switches to kilometers, which is super useful in, in US. When you go to US, I always wanna see uh, miles per hour so I can adjust my speed. And here, see so like it shows you your trip A, you can reset it. It shows you your current and um, well, now the engine is stopped because it still has the stop and go and average uh, fuel economy. Uh, current speed limit and then what's playing on the radio right now and it has all kinds of advanced collision systems you know lane departure warnings and um, and this is how you you turn off that uh, auto stop and go the only problem is um, the only problem is uh, uh, Steven said uh, you have to do it every time you know, it cannot be turned off completely. So basically when you start the vehicle, if you don't want this, you click that button. And once you shut down the engine, it's gonna reset. <laughs> it's gonna reset. And of course it has a, um, adaptive cruise control. You see like with this, you can choose your, your distance, how far, how far you want you know, to be from a vehicle in the front. And then once the sensor uh, realizes, you know, that that distance is reached, it's, it's gonna start slowing down. And of course you can use your Bluetooth, you know, all kinds of cool things. And then over here, I still have to learn all this. Uh, oh, that's where the trunk is. Finally, I found the button for the trunk. Now, like on the Hellcat and all challenges, it was over here. And I was like, what the heck was this? <laughs> Where's the trunk button? So it's over here now. And of course it's all leather. And basically I waited there. Um, when we finished the deal, I went, uh, they gave me a rental car, like super nice. I'm telling you, this dealer is super nice. They gave me a rental Jeep, Jeep Cherokee. I said, I want to go to a coffee shop to wait while you guys are detailing the car because they did clean it up before, but it was just, you know, quick, cleanup job they did not do the full size you know pre-sale um uh, you know polishing cleaning and so these mats were in the back and so i asked them can you please like install all the mats you know and i'm super happy with this because you know normally this costs a lot of money like at least i don't know 250 bucks you know uh even my hellcat such an expensive vehicle didn't come with any floor mats you know i had to i even didn't buy something uh, usually i buy that weather tech but with Hellcat, I went cheap and I just drove over to Canadian Tie and I got some basic mats that would fit in here. Like here you have regular, you know, super nice all-weather Jeep mats. And of course, you know, leather seats, trail hook. It's, you know, it's super nice. It's, it's not the cheapest. Like I was saying yesterday, the cheapest, and look at all these handles, you know. The cheapest... Uh, Compass, it's like 32,000 bucks, but it's it doesn't have this inside, it doesn't have this leather, it doesn't have this stitching, you know. And also, yeah, you see this super, super nice floor mats. I really like this. Um, and also, the basic, a uh, basic uh, Jeep doesn't have this high ground clearance. This is higher by one inch, I think, or two inches. And actually yesterday I was looking at the car that's parked next to me and I noticed that how low that guy is, you know, like the regular car, it was like this. Like with this, especially with this rubber here or plastic and these nice tires, you know, I, I can now go to that uh, public land zone and so that's how it looks now after all this nice cleaning they did see everything is shiny looks like a brand new vehicle is what it is super fancy headlights tow hooks fog lights nice rims trail rated so skid plates underneath just no sunroof, which I don't need anyway. And that's my new ride, boys and girls. 
I don't know. I'm really happy with this. The only thing now I have to, to uh, get used to is that the tank opening is on the right. Whereas before, before it was on the left. Very, you know, modern lights. And of course, you know, you can close the vehicle by like this. You can put your, you can put your, uh, oh, and it has this. I really like this uh, turn signals. Let's just turn on four-way flashes and see how how the lights look. You see, it flashes here. Like, look at this! Isn't that fancy? <laughs> and it flashes here at the top. we have in the back or oh, in the back we just have the center center is flashing but it's all LED as you can see all LED all modern lights and I like this so if you get stuck uh, towing capacity I've I checked so of course 4x4 four four. I checked the so that's your electric right lights the receiver um, towing capacity is not that great it's only 2,000 pounds oh and by the way you see like the windows are tinted like here legally you're not supposed to have tint but here see they tint I think it's like 5% these ones are tinted and these ones are tinted from the factory that's why I don't have to do it myself compass all right Let's go some wine to celebrate because yesterday was just a, kind of like a preliminary preliminary day and I like this like this is super easy to use you know how to adjust your mirrors and then all, these are all the electric even the back even the back you use this um, they didn't give you the full lumbar support you see this usually on my Hellcat there was another button here and here but here it just gives you this base like the lumbar support is only here, there's nothing here. I'm guessing that would be another extra package to, to add the uh, buttons here and here. But this is, again, everything is electric except the steering wheel is uh, telescopic, is uh, action is uh, manual. And I always put it in auto headlights, so this way they, they turn on by themselves. And speakers, I think I have six speakers. Like it sounds super nice because now I, you know, brand new vehicle, they always give you, they give you a one year free of uh, uh, satellite radio. And I, I really, I'm really used to Sirius XM. Oh, and by the way, the roof is black. I just noticed now. <laughs> That's what makes this car or jeep in my opinion look good is that it's uh, the bottom is black right the black wheels and black plastic and this inserts in here right and the top is black these, uh, I'm not sure what these are for but I don't know super nice I'm very happy very happy with this purchase and super happy that I super happy that I got rid of the Hellcat but I mentioned in a comment on uh, community in the community section on YouTube that I checked again as soon as I sold the Hellcat two more Hellcats disappeared in Canada you know like before uh, in January we had 16 brand new 22 Challenger Hellcats, regular body, just like mine. For entire Canada, population 35 million people. So we had 16 Challenger Hellcats. In May, we had four, four left. And now I checked this morning, as I was waiting for them to finish uh, detailing, and there's only two, two remaining. But Eastside Dodge, where I got this, they told me that they have one on order, 
there's, there's, there's one more brand new Hellcat is coming. So there's going to be three. But I still think that <laughs> if I had money to keep paying for this Hellcat because it's so expensive, it would be cool to see what's going to happen once they once they uh, sell all 22 Challenger Hellcats, you know? The price would probably go up slightly, but I, I, you would have to wait probably, I don't know, half a year, a year, and, uh, and every month, it's just, it's, it was way too expensive. And just like these cars, we were just talking about this with um, Steven, the sales guy, he says, these cars, Hellcats, they're really not designed as a daily driver. Like usually who buys them? Some rich guy who can, who can afford, you know, to pay a hundred grand for a Hellcat and then he keeps it or she keeps it for like weekend trips to the coffee shop or to some car meets, right? But then they have something like Japanese, you know, Toyota Camry. Uh, with good fuel efficiency and nice luxury interior for daily trips or maybe some big SUV, right? So people that buy these Hellcats, they don't buy them as a single vehicle, you know? And that's definitely not me. That's, I was just trying to, like I mentioned before, the, the plan was to make some money on YouTube, do videos about the Hellcat, but then you guys did not watch them at all. I was getting very low views, so I didn't make any money of that pretty much. So that was a fiasco. And then plan B was to, uh, to wait for the uh, prices to go up, right? If that did not happen as quickly as I hoped. And again, because this is a regular body Hellcat, right? This is not a wide body. This is not a jailbreak, uh, you know. So these cars, there's a lot of them. There's a lot of them in the States. So in theory, Canadian dealers can bring it from US, except that our dollar is like 1.3, right? So like hundred dollars US is 130 Canadian. Uh, but they could do it, you know, like once these, the two, two remaining Hellcats, or let's say three, the third one with the East Side Dodge. So let's say these three remaining for the entire Canada are gone. I'm pretty sure prices will start creeping up, but it would take, you know, half a year, or probably a year to, uh, to, to be able to sell that uh, Hellcat. And one more thing about this is that, first of all, of course, the fuel economy is super bad, except on the freeway. As you remember, I went to, um, to uh, Lake Louise. It was doing 10 liters per 100 kilometers at 120K an hour with the red key, 717 horsepower. So I didn't see pretty much any difference between that and the Challenger 6.4 liter. It's the same. But in the city, man, it was 17 liters, uh, just slightly worse than a Dodge Ram 1500, but still worse, right? So in the city, very bad, between lights. And so, yeah, you cannot have this as a single vehicle. And secondly, you don't want to drive it too much because uh, first off, the fuel, fuel economy is so bad, but secondly, because uh, you plan to sell it one day, right? And it's an expensive car, so you want to keep the kilometers as low as possible. And so it's kind of like a paradox where you have a super nice car, but you cannot drive it, right? <laughs> because for, another problem might be you can get into an accident, right? And they're very expensive to fix. So uh, it's kind of like a very controversial uh, car, you know, like really it's for people that can afford to have two or three vehicles and people maybe that collect them, you know, and have this one for every other weekend to go to car meets and coffee shops, like I mentioned, but then you still need another a regular vehicle for driving and then probably you need another vehicle if you're rich enough for uh, off-roading, right? And so now I, I uh, I compromised by getting this small Jeep, which has an excellent gas economy, and it can go off-road. I just wish it would have a slightly better uh, towing capacity because it, you know it only has 2,000 pounds. That's like nothing. Because I thought I would maybe advertise uh, like a service, you know, to tow rich people's boats and stuff like that. But 2,000 pounds, I don't know how heavy these regular boats are, but it just, 
I don't think you can, you can tow too much with 2,000 pound capacity. But other than that, I think for me, that's a perfect vehicle. Small, easy to park, easy to maneuver, good on gas, leather inside, uh, nice turbo engine, pretty perky, and you can go off-road. You know, you can go shooting, you can go hiking. So I think that's a perfect vehicle for Canada. So it's kind of like same as RAV4 Toyota, but I really prefer American vehicles. I had very good luck with them. And I don't think I ever, oh, I had the Mazda. I had two Mazdas. And I cannot say that I liked them because the ride was very harsh. And when I complained to the dealer, they said all Mazdas are tuned with uh, sport suspension, like very rough suspension, which basically was sport suspension. So it's like designed when you drive like 300 kilometers an hour and they put that suspension on a regular car. So it was not comfy at all. So I did not like it. I, I think when I had a Dodge Ram 1500 or even Ford F-150, the suspension was much smoother than on that Mazda. So that was my only experience with uh, uh, Japanese vehicles. Like I said, I really prefer American vehicles, especially Chrysler, Ram, Dodge. I don't know, call me crazy, but that's, you know, it's all per personal preference. That's what worked for me. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching. Ciao.